That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Baccarat, which opens March 13th, 2020, courtesy of Kino Lorber. Uh, it premiered at the 2019 Cannes Film Festival in competition, uh, where it won the Grand Jury Prize, which is, oh, sorry, the Jury Prize, which is uh, technically a third place prize. Um, and it is the third feature directed by uh, Kleber Mendonca Filho. Uh, and he is co directing for the first time with Juli Giuliano Dornelsch, who. Um, was his production designer in his last two films, Neighboring Sounds and Aquarius. All right. Try to tell the story. Uh, it's about a, a small rural area, a town known as Baccarat, which uh, means Nighthawk, literally. Uh, and uh, they are slowly, uh, it's, we slowly learn that they are under siege uh, thanks to a group of I guess, what would you call those men? Mercenary? The people that, people come to hunt them for sports, much like the most dangerous game and The Hunt, which also is released uh, strangely, coincidentally, on the same weekend. Um, and the town's people fight back. Yeah. Would that be apt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about it? Well, this is one of my favorite films from Cannes last year, and I believe I liked it a lot more than you did. Yes, you do like it more than I do. Mm -hmm. I would say this film feels art house meets grindhouse because it's a it's a very low. It's two hours and eleven minutes, and I will contend that it does feel long in some stretches. But uh, it uh, is a slow burn. It almost feels like a kind of anthropological study, uh, and then it veers into a heavy left. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, this because film is doing a lot of things. Yes, it is. Many of which are done very well. Uh, my biggest issue probably is the pacing mm -hmm. combined with the fact that the film is so long for what it is. Um, didn't make it the most enjoyable experience, but I do think that a lot of it's very well done. A lot of the performances um, are very uh, good. So the group of people attempting to wipe off these townspeople are these white people Americans white Americans well, who are led by Udo Kier a mm -hmm. German who's lived in America for over 40 years but mm -hmm. um, as his character says they I think the people who wrote the story maybe should have let someone else write those characters see or, I, I think it's on purpose <laughs> that they don't really care that those people all sound obnoxious and terrible but Right, and, and, and I'm sure that was the choice. I just think that the tone of the film is all over the place and the quirkiness kind of combined with those characters. Because the village people, those characterizations, those actors are very strong. Oh, yeah. And very watchable, particularly... Um, so there's like the like the village uh, medical provider. Sonia Braga, who, who's excellent. Was star, you know, the famous, very famous Brazilian actress who was the lead in Aquarius, his last film. There are three scenes with her <clears throat> uh, where she's the primary uh, actor who uh, that are like really, really good and left me wanting more of her. There's also a character named Lunga. Lunga, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is like a gangster guy who left the village and returned because he's on the run from authorities. Mm -hmm. He's also very interesting, very watchable. Amongst other characters who are like members of the village. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. very well done, very well acted. But then you have Udo Kier and his bunch of white racist killers. And they're just kind of like, it's, I mean, it's not really humorous. They're just kind of like... Like bad. They have a lot of salty, ripe dialogue. Yeah, they, but but also I think that their dialogue is kind of the key to what the filmmakers are trying to say. Sure. So but, again, I don't think it's poorly done. I just didn't like those choices mm -hmm. and felt kind of tedious. I think it took away from what I think um, could have been a really, really great film. I think for it, me, I think it is a great film because all those or things, enjoyable, I should say. Okay, I, I still enjoyed it. I laughed quite a bit even on a rewatch. But I didn't laugh at anything, so I don't know what you thought was so funny. Oh, I, well, I could read. I could listen to Udo Kier do most things in English and find him entertaining. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a there's a lot of things that it's hinting at. It's you know uh, there's, there's a parallel of the American political landscape versus the Brazilian political landscape currently. Um, I think that there's statements here being made about nationalism, how, how national, 
nationalism is really the new colonialism and where once we um, kill people for their land, now we're just fucking killing them for fun. Um, it, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot that could be unpacked. There's a lot of symbolism in this film, yeah. which is not lost on me. Which is also the, the title of the film, which is kind of mysterious because it's the name of the town, but it's really this strange bird that's local to the area that we never see, but is large and comes out and hunts at night. But that is the sense that I get about these citizens here. And there's a lot of conversations. The, the two motorbike riders are like, what do they call the people here? Um, th there's a lot of uh, th thematics about national identity. And Udo Kier's whole speech about, I'm more American than you because I'm older than you and have lived in America longer than you. Yeah, what, is it like to, what does it mean to be an American because we are so obsessed with who is and who isn't? Whereas these people, this is where you live, you're part of this community, that's, it's said and done. I agree with you. I think all of that's present and it's, and it's obvious. It just is not in a very enjoyable package. So I'm just talking about for entertainment value, sure. I didn't enjoy this film, but I think it's well done. Um, all those points you made do make sense to me. Um, I just think there were so many good things in the film and this film's so damn long mm -hmm. that we could have it extracted the things that didn't work and made this like a really entertaining film for someone with my taste. What I think would have made a better story is there's this um, sort of side plot of the mayor of the district this town is in. Tony Jr. Tony Jr. Um, the village people don't like him. He's obviously doing a shitty job running the town. There's an issue with getting water into the town or the village. So it would make sense to me that this uh, mayor is attempting to wipe out the village people to then maybe like maybe he's in cahoots with some development company to like make the village into something else. So instead of having these sort of like lamely written white killers, why not just have like some thugs come in and try to take out the villagers and then Lunga, his character sort of organizes all the townspeople to fight back. That's kind of the story I would have wanted to see just because I think it would have been very satisfying to have everyone sort of written similarly. Uh, and, and it would have been more thrilling because the minute, because we learned, because this movie's so damn long, we learned pretty early on that it's just a game. Yeah. It's just a game. Yeah. So then it they're, doesn't. They're, they're winning points for their number of kills. Right. So it's not thrilling, I, I don't think at all. But no, right. Yeah. So then it's just like, well, there's no suspense. It's not thrilling. The pacing, there are huge gaps between when something actually happens that it just, you know, it was a chore to sit through. That being said, I really do think that there are a lot of great parts to this film. So I don't think it's poorly done. I just didn't. For no. me, I didn't care for the story. But like you said, all the symbolism that's there, it is present and it's a good conversation piece. It's very singular kind of filmmaking, to be sure. But, you know, the, to me, that's... These are, like, very clearly artistic choices that were made, and I very much appreciate that more than having... Because, you know, in between watching The Hunt and rewatching this, I caught up with Ernest Dickerson's Surviving the Game with Ice-T, which is basically also another riff on The Most Dangerous Game, and just how if they had stuck to those kind of parameters, how it would have seemed like another... In a, a, a successive line of rehashing the same material. So this is this is definitely obviously they're borrowing. We were talking about influences and who this movie is for, and I think you compared it to maybe somebody like David Lynch um, to determine if you like Eli Roth, you won't like this film. If you like David Lynch, you might like this film. But there there will not be anybody else that's going to make a film that you can say like, oh, they're ripping off Baccarat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, like there are deliberate choices that are made and for that reason I would say it's a well done film. So I don't think it's poorly done. I just think the choices that were made distracted from sure. some really strong points. Like for instance, uh, the killers use like drone oh, yes. to kind of watch over the area that they're about to attack and the drone is meant to look like Kind of like a 50s sort of UFO. a 50s UFO that's dangling from a string. Yeah, even the the, the effects are, I think, on purpose. Cheesy. Sure, sure. So you know, to me, it's like, well, what's happening is pretty serious, and I think in contrast to the village people, their acting is very strong. So it just 
it, it took me out. And then well, because the pacing's <clears throat> weird, it's like, oh, it takes me out and then it doesn't bring me back for a long time. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, non-English speaking directors directing in English have that problem. Well, that's what so, I was saying. And I think they were playing so that to their effect, I guess. Well, but, but you know, it is a thing. And it and if for someone like me, it's like, oh, well, maybe not do that. Do what you're good at doing. And also, I found it interesting that they seem to be under collective spell or drug-induced spell, kind of. Yeah, there are so many there's interesting so many things, things that, because they introduced this idea of like an, um, a mood inhibitor. Yeah. But I don't think that's what they were under the influence of because I noticed that the, one of the older gentlemen who makes this concoction, everyone was swallowing these like seeds mm -hmm. or buds. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. That's not really developed. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of things in the film that were really interesting to me that, that aren't taken advantage of, but... You know, still a well done movie. For that reason, I would give it two and a half out of five stars. But that's purely for <laughs> entertainment value, not because it's not a good film. Okay, uh, I, I maintain. I when I reviewed it for Can, I gave it four out of five, and I would still very much enjoyed it on a rewatch. I, I look, and if you do care for this film at all, it's I'd say quite a bit different tonally from his first two films, but. Neighboring Sounds from 2012 and especially Aquarius from 2016, which features a fantastic Sonia Braga, which also has some similar themes in a markedly different vein, are definitely worth checking out. But uh, yeah, four out of five for me. All right, bye. Bye.